Hey team, finally a warm, uh, warm morning out here. It's starting to actually feel like spring. Uh, we're now almost nine weeks into this COVID new world. And let's be honest, a lot has changed. Last week, we talked about the value of persistence, despite how grim the circumstances. Uh, I hope that was of some value to you. This week, I wanted to share with you guys something a little lighter and that has been fun for me over the past couple years, running. Probably like most of us, I love the outdoors. Look around me, the trees, the skies, um, got a little rain this morning. Um, even, uh, even some of the harsher weather, the cold, the heat, I love it, I'm all about it. You get out in a place like this and running is a way to enjoy it. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not about to give you guys some pro advice, I'm far from that. Um, but another part of running I enjoy is setting goals and then accomplishing them. Uh, for instance, starting out, um, I resolved to run two miles. Now I'm not going to lie, it was painful. I remember feeling a strange piercing go through my body telling me to stop just after mile one. Your, so your stomach starts to feel funky, your legs get really heavy, and without fail, the thought crosses your mind, eh, maybe I should get home, it's getting a little bit late, right? Uh, you get so persuasive uh, with yourself to weasel out of a goal. Now, put that on the scale of a marathon, a full 26 mile run, and you're raising the ante. What is it that gets you past that one and a half mile hump? And is it something that gets you past the mile 12 or mile 16 or mile 19 hump? I just named all my most painful thresholds during my training, all the way up to 26.2. I would propose that three things helped me along the way, um, and those were preparation, dedication, and passion. Now preparation, my mom would always say growing up, uh, church doesn't start on Sunday morning, it starts the night before, and we would laugh it off, but man is she right. Getting fueled up the night before a long run is almost just as important as what you eat and drink the morning of. You set your alarm, you get yourself a running partner, lay your clothes out, whatever it takes to prepare so that when that alarm goes off at 5 a.m., you're not punking out. Number two is passion. Here's the fun quality. I alluded to this earlier, but there really is something special out there for each of us. And when you get a glimpse of it, doesn't it give you an extra pep in your step? For me, it's when the dark sky turns to light or a fox doesn't see you coming and you get within 10 feet of it. Or I just ran through a hard rain for an hour and I'm feeling strong. Just a little glimpse into your purpose in life, and man, it pumps me up. And dedication. Now this may be the most important of the three qualities. What keeps you from quitting? You know it's a good thing, you enjoy it, but why not tap that alarm and sleep for another hour? This dedication thought is the one characteristic that carries through to race day. The preparation, that gets you to the starting line. The passion, those skips can turn into grimaces in pretty short order. The dedication though, that helps out when you exchange the sunshine and rainbows of the first two thirds of the race for the collapsing buildings and pain of the last two thirds. I almost just said, it's not all that bad, but it kind of is. Your shin muscles, which by the way, I didn't know this was a thing, they cramp up so bad you can't walk. Your hamstrings and calves threaten to cinch up in pain. You can't get enough breath into your lungs and start to feel delirious. Why am I even doing this? All true stories, by the way. So what am I going to do? I'm not quitting. I just trained for this for four months. I'm dedicated to finish this thing. I pretty much crawled over the finish line of my first marathon, but since then I've learned how to be better prepared, the value of dedication, and my recent two marathons were much better experiences all around. Every single one of you have walked through G Fidel training for everything, anything between two weeks and 10 weeks. I talked to other roofers and they just laugh. We just throw our new people in, but that's who we are. And I've personally seen on multiple occasions how we as a team have handled COVID ahead of our peers. And I think a large part of that is our preparation. Passion, I can't tell you how excited I am to talk to anyone that calls me throughout the day from the G Fidel team, even with hard situations, because I know you all care about what you do. Countless customers have said to me, there's no complaining around the water cooler at your work when I came in to visit her. So-and-so loves his job. Are you guys hiring? Countless times, seriously. And then dedication. Don't get me started. Emails or calls from you guys after hours, emergency visits on Sunday. I've got to give a shout out to my man, Dre. 
And I quote from a customer, while many roofers would have been nowhere to be found on a Sunday to deal with my leak, Dre came right out. He apologized a thousand times, was so accommodating. I don't know how to thank you. And that's a true story. You guys are exemplary in these three traits. And I challenge you to press in further. COVID-19 has been some of our own personal and professional marathon. And some of you are feeling right now like you're around mile 20. Well, keep it up. You've got about 75 G Fidel brothers and sisters on the sidelines cheering you on. And keep in mind, you have prepared for this and you're passionate. And if you work here, you're not the type to go down without a fight and you're dedicated to see it through. Thanks guys.